What's up, guys, and welcome, Daily Theologians. I wanted to tackle a few stories today. Number one, the GoFundMe completely erasing the Canadian truckers' page and taking away their funds, so let's check that out. Uh, again, the Joe Rogan thing, what's motivating people to attack him on free speech? And then we want to take a look at uh, the John MacArthur, Dr. Fresca, reminding us to uh, basically... Pray for the pastors in Canada over Bill C-4. General Miley, who I don't have a lot of respect for, but he's uh, making some predictions about the Ukraine and uh, Russia conflict. And then uh, Dr. Sproul weighs in. Uh, actually, it's one of his uh, professors at their the seminary or their ministry on predestination and free will, that old chestnut. And uh, I think it's important for us to remember that, though. And then uh, this story is on a uh, group that plowed into uh, protesters, and then Biden says some uh, amendments in the Bill of Rights are not absolute, so that's comforting coming from the commander-in-chief. Anyways, so here we go. Story number one, John MacArthur. He rallied pastors to preach against government bans on conversion therapy. Now, many of you know this. I did a video on this. They took down the original sermon, and then they uh, reposted an edited version, and is what happened there, um, because he said things that were considered to be hate speech. And he said controversial things over the, the last two years, such as there is no... Anyways, you can read that. I don't want to get this video banned for that. Um, he says these are an urgent matter, and I, I would agree. Here's James Coates. <clears throat> he did some time in the slammer up in Canada, eh? And uh, we have to remember, these guys are going to go through it because you preach repentance. And I was talking to a friend last night. It's one of the key themes of the whole Bible. Humanity follows Satan, rejects God, and is thus dead in sin and under the wrath of God. Rejecting God, going the wrong way, we have to call them to turn to follow Jesus, to turn from Satan to Jesus in repentance, to recognize that we're guilty and to fall on the mercy of Jesus who is fully God and fully man. So anyways, uh, James Coates and a few other guys up there, remember Arthur Palowski and um, Raquel Stevens, I believe his name is, um, he's been in the slammer as well. And so we have to pay attention to this because this is coming to the USA. It's going to come here because the ide ideology, once it finds a wedge that says, oh, I can use this to get power, I can use this to advance my hatred of reality, then it's full speed ahead. It's hard to stop something like this. Uh, the, the only restraining influence in the world right now is the Holy Spirit anyways, and it's common grace that restrains the unregenerate, and that's being removed, I think, as a judgment. Uh, we'll see. Roe versus Wade is a good example of this. Okay, so what's driving people to uh, hunt down Joe Rogan? Yesterday, the podcast removal count was at 70. Now it's over 100, according to the Daily Wire. Um, and it's, it's interesting because he's not, as I've said before, he, he's not a conservative. He's a liberal, basically. And he just, it says he has 11 million listeners, but they just don't, like his hunt for truth is unacceptable because he falls outside of the narrative. So when you have no argumentation, when you have no uh, basis for your beliefs, you have to result, or, or you go to censorship. You have to remove the discussion because it's unacceptable. Um, so so uh, Rogan says, he says, this will reduce your lifespan by 10 years, he's saying potentially. Um, he's saying that. Um, I, I'm not going to read that because then this video will get banned. Um, but anyways, it's uh, the crime is he's listening to people besides the sanctified, sainted Dr. Anthony Fauci. I am the science. I can't do a Fauci. I, I haven't practiced. I really don't want to. Uh, he He's, yeah, oof. Um, okay, so Rogan is uh, having differing people on, talking about potentially shortening your lifespan. It could hurt you. Really, it's changing your RNA, guys. I mean, it's this is not... Um, I'm not saying don't get it, but this is not the normal way these things work. And so it's a, it's a risk that they don't know the, uh, the effects of yet. Um, so he talks to people, and of course that is unacceptable. Uh, speaking of unacceptable, the truckers in Canada, their GoFundMe page had over $10 million. I think that was Canadian, so it's like 50 cents American. Just kidding, Canadian friends. Um, our, our money's worth nothing. What am I saying? We're printing it like it's made of paper. So, uh, yeah. Um, I think we're $29 trillion in debt. Um, but anyways, the GoFundMe page, uh, they took it down, 50,000 truckers, 70 kilometers long, and 
I don't know why people use GoFundMe, to be honest with you. It, it, it's going to censor you. It's going to take your money. It's not going to let it stay, especially if they disagree with your take on things. They do this every time. So I don't know why people use it, but hopefully they can go to a different platform and uh, get their funds back to help these guys because they're making an impact. So uh, they the GoFundMe froze the funds and then they took it down and they're offering an automatic refund from last I saw to all of the people, which tells you just something about the world we live in. You know, if we disagree with you, you're going to be canceled. You will be canceled. Uh, so uh, keep praying for those guys. They're making an impact. Uh, they're making headway up there in Canada. Even if they're freezing, look at them. And they're still out there supporting the truckers. Uh, General Miley, uh, not well, I, I don't really trust this guy. Um, big various reasons with things you guys probably remember that he said. Um, but anyways, he's saying like 70 hours that uh, Ukraine could fall. And uh, that would be, I guess, a short article. And so I, what do we do with that? I don't know. It's, it's interesting that, that um, we're more willing to defend Ukraine than the U.S. We have an open border, you know. But at the, end of, visitor. At the end of the day, um, what can you do, you know? Uh, it, it's important. We want to have uh, help people in Europe. Uh, I think it's hard to predict the different variables on this. Um, but just keep Russia in prayer um, and the Ukraine because the end times do appear to be, you know, lining up. But that could be true of every generation. So remember, don't over-focus on the end times. The key is to focus on preaching the gospel and reaching people with the gospel. Okay, here we go. Do predestination and free will contradict one another? No, they don't. You're free to make choices consistent with your nature. Thank you. Let's move on. But no, it's so hard for people in... Uh, American evangelicalism to accept this. I have no idea why. I think it's often because they're not reading the Bible or they're following emotionalism. And people get really mad at me when I say this and they show that they're mad and they're emotional in the comment section. It exactly proves what I'm saying. It's not a biblical argument. And God is the one who has a free will. You don't. You're a slave to your nature. Once you're in Christ, you've been set free. You have a new nature, new desires. But we still struggle with a sinful nature. So let's see what this guy says. Robert Godfrey. Augustine early in his career wrote a, a treatise called The Freedom of the Will, and he never retracted that, despite his strong teaching on predestination. And he never retracted that because when he talked about the freedom of the will, what he really meant was that you have a genuine will that genuinely operates according to the way you want it to operate. So in that sense, you could call that will free. It's a real will. It's a choosing will. And it has freedom to do it at once. Um, the reform doctrine of total depravity is not that we don't have a functioning will. It's that we have a will that always acts in accordance with our fallen, depraved nature. Exactly. So we always freely will against God until we're regenerated. Um, nonetheless, that's not what most people probably mean when they talk about the freedom of the will. Exactly. We are dead in sin and we make choices consistent with our nature. This isn't hard to see, is it? Um, most people, when they use the phrase, the freedom of the will, mean that I'm perfectly free to choose for God or against God. And in that sense, it conflicts with the doctrine of predestination. The doctrine of predestination, in, in response to that notion of the freedom of the will, wants to say, uh, you don't have freedom to choose for God, because your will is in rebellion against God. And it's only when God heals your rebellion, it's only when God regenerates your heart, it's only when God sovereignly turns you back to himself that you can know him and pursue him. That answer was recorded. Okay, so agreed. So pretty much answers that one. Free nature. <clears throat> and the other thing, when you're talking about this with people, Real choices. See, the idea of freedom, independence from God, this is not a biblical idea. Arminian and, and provisionalists and semi-Pelagian, it's all the same. Don't fall for the provisionalist bait. It's, it's, it's not. Uh, it's all the same. You're, you're not independent of God. You're dependent on God. In fact, I was reading in Job just yesterday that if God were to withdraw his spirit from people, all men, all flesh would turn to dust, it says. You're dependent on God. You're not free. You're not autonomous. Next question. Okay. So uh, this apparently somebody plowed into uh, people in Canada injuring three. Let's check this out. 
Doesn't look like there's any sound with this. But somebody plowed into these people. Um, let's see. Anyways, hopefully it doesn't show them getting hit by a car. Um, but anyways, Canada's, they're standing up for their rights and obviously the people were upset and people were blaming Trudeau for calling them a fringe minority. Uh, three of the victims sustained, sustained minor injuries, do not require them to be hospitalized. So anyways, keep praying for those guys. They're making an impact up there in the Canada. Um, and, you know, people are not so happy with this guy. Okay, Joe Biden. Yeah, the good old lovable Joe. Um, they don't care what reality says. They don't care what's in the law. It's just what they can get away with. And so he's routinely demonstrated this by passing executive orders that he knows to be unconstitutional. And now he's saying there's no amendment. This is the Tatum report. No amendment. And be careful with Tatum. He uh, does not believe in the deity of Christ. He's a heretic. Sorry. Um, it's true. Uh, but Biden says uh, no bill, but he does he does good common grace you know work on some areas. Um, no bill is absolute. No no right is absolute. Well, where did that come from? And he compared a like a handgun to a cannon. He said you didn't have a right to a cannon. I, I don't know. It's just arguing from insanity at this point. Um, and so he's saying that no no uh, right is absolute, and it's just not. It's, I don't know. What can you do with him? Just continue to pray for President Joe Biden. President. Uh, I mean, he is in the office, so we do. We should respect him as Christians and pray for him, um, even if we're not sure how he got there. Anyways, um, hopefully this stuff is helpful. Remember, the ultimate issue in all of this uh, is to follow Jesus, follow his example. And I, I'll probably do a video on Matthew 7. People misunderstand Matthew 7. They say, build your house on the rock. The rock is obedience to the word of God. It's not building your life on Jesus. You can't build your life on Jesus. You have to build your life on obedience to his word because your heart has been regenerated. You've responded in repentance of faith, death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man Jesus Christ. Fulfilled the law, paid an infinite hell, dead on the cross, died, and rose. So in Matthew 7, it's talking to people that said they were Christians. Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? He says, I'll tell you what they're like. And pay attention to metaphors in the Bible. The word like, the whole Holy Spirit is not a dove, like a dove in bodily form. He's a person, like one that builds on a rock. So it's comparison, the one that hears the words of mine and does them is the one that builds on the rock. Obedience to the word is essential in the life of the believer and is the result of regenerated heart, changed nature, new creation in Christ. I'll go more in depth than that, but essentially there are things in the Bible that we must read carefully and we must understand them in their context. Ultimately, we're justified, given a right standing with God through faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man, Jesus Christ. God works through covenants. He always keeps his promises. This is for the praise of his glory. Hence, Romans chapter 4. Check out Romans 4. Check out Genesis 22. Connect the pieces, and you will understand the gospel. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to hammer that like button, like the 95 Theses, and leave a comment below. Let me know what you're thinking. Thank you. God bless.